Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Docker and local development. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I have recently started using Docker and I think it's great, but is it only great for deployment of applications or does it also have a use case for local development? And the short answer is, it, the short answer is that it absolutely has a use case for local development, a really, really great one, or at least three that I know of. So my favorite three reasons to use Docker for local development, number one is for sure that if I just install Docker, then if my application uses a bunch of other services, I can very easily run a command, just download like a Docker container from a repository, like from one single repository, and then spin up my my application, like the application instance or the service on my local computer immediately. And I don't have to worry so much about installing things myself. My favorite one is of course a database. So let's say that I use MongoDB or Postgres or something like that. Instead of going to their website and then installing everything on my computer and then putting my file, like all that, those files on my computer, I can just go to, go to my terminal, run docker pull, and then pull down the Mongo's image. It's a ready finished database package in a nice container. I can spin that up and I can use it just as I would as, it's the same thing, it's just that it's running in the container, right? And then when I'm done with it and I don't need it anymore, I can just uninstall it very quickly. I don't have to be worried that there are a bunch of files somewhere or something like that. It's all good. It's a very, I mean, this is the beautiful part about Docker cont containers in general. It's so, so simple. Like it doesn't have to de be deployment to a remote server. It can be just deployment to your local environment. It's the same thing, just as if you were to run it in production. It's just that you're doing it on your own computer. So that's one, probably my favorite use case for Docker. Now a second use case that is very strong as well is something that I used to do with uh, virtual machines back uh, this is a few years back. I stopped doing this when Docker kind of became a thing, but uh, something that is, it has been popular at least, is to create a, um, a workstation environment. What do I mean by that? Well, it's very simple. So we all work on different computers, like some people work on a Mac, some people work on Linux, and some people work on Windows, right? So. One of the most classic sayings in programming is that you will say something like, oh, it works on my machine. You know, something goes wrong on somebody's computer and then you have some coworker says, oh, you know, I'm just gonna check it out. And they check it out and then it works on their machine. It doesn't work on your machine, but it works on their machine. So who is, who is right? Like, is the code broken or is it just some local thing, right? But what you can do, which is pretty cool, is that you can create an image, a Docker container, like a, uh, that just contains your source code. Like it just contains all the tools and the environmental stuff, like the, all, the, all the code basically, all these tools, build, like build tools and stuff like that, that you need in order to work on your project. And then you can spin that up and then you can you know, connect to the container and then just connect the uh, container's volume system to your local file system. So that if you make a change on one of the files, so let's say that you're working on some web application or something like that, you're making some changes, then since Docker is connected to the file system, you will actually be able to just work as normal. You know, you work from your text editor or your IDE, whatever you're using, in the exact same way as you usually do. It's just that when you want to run your uh, different commands, let's say that you have some terminal commands that does some compilation or maybe bundling like something with Webpack or Gulp or Grunt or something like that, whatever you're using, then you run that within the Docker container's shell because all that is already set up for you. And that's also this also has the same sort of benefit that let's say that, oh, you don't want all of this installed on your computer. Well, then it's very easy. Then you just delete the uh, container and all these extra tools that you may don't, maybe you don't want to have installed on your computer, they go away as well because they're inside of the, well, inside of the container, right? One thing that I think, this is a super minor thing that is a little bit annoying with working like that, is that, uh, you know, of course, I want to personalize my own workstation. I have my own terminal set up, my own theme, and like all my other tools that are not per, per se involved in my work 
just it's just something that I use myself, like my own personal stuff. And when you're working from a Docker container in this manner, it, you know you don't have the same sort of thing installed. So sometimes I forget that oh I can't run the same commands. I don't have the same same aliases and like all of that stuff inside of the Docker shell or the container shell as I have in my regular shell. You can work around this. It's just a very minor thing that I, you know, that sometimes is a little bit frustrating for me. And third and lastly, I would say that a very strong use case for local development is if you have multiple services. Let's say that you're doing something like microservices or you're doing something like a SOA architecture. You, it's kind of the same thing uh, as I was saying in the first step, like, you know, you can just install different services. And let's say for the sake of argument that it's more complicated for you than just having a database. Because if you just use Docker to pull down a database and then you connect your own application code to that database, that's a very easy use case. But let's say that you have multiple services. Maybe you have multiple applications. Maybe you are responsible for one part of the system and then you have three, four different other coworkers who are responsible for their parts, but they these all these uh, services, they connect to each other. Well, then you pretty much need to have all of these things running together on your laptop or your, your workstation in order to do any meaningful work. And this is something that Docker Compose can help you with. And it's a great, I mean, Docker Compose is just another layer on top of Docker. It's another tool that allows you to connect together all of these different containers. You can basically spin up a bunch of containers uh, with just a configuration file instead of having to do it manually for each thing. You can still do that, of course, but it's the same sort of benefit, right? You simply have a need to have multiple instances of something running, and it's so much easier to do that through Docker than having, I mean, three or four different shells that are all, all running together or your own like background. You, I mean, you can set all of this up yourself, of course. You can schedule things and you can also set things as background jobs and background processes through the shell, but Docker just makes it a lot easier. And then you can, of course, get logging and all of this stuff. So I highly recommend you to have a look at Docker Compose if you're actually working with multiple services that all need to work together. So what I want you to take away from this is that Docker absolutely has a use case for local development. My three favorite ones are simply that you need to, in a very clean way, just be able to pull down like a database or something like that and start that up on your computer. You want to, with the least amount of hassle, Docker gives you that. Like uh, doing Docker pull is a lot easier than doing an, a normal install. And then, then when you're done and you want to get rid of the thing, it's very easy to just make sure that everything is gone as well. Second use case is, let's say that you have a team with people working in different environments and you want to make sure that they all have the same work set up, then you can create a container that contains all of the different tools, like, I don't know whichever tools you're using, right, in that environment, and then they run and they work with those tools within that container. So it's the same benefit. They can install everything they need with a simple command and then just spin up the container and work from inside that container. And third and lastly, I think if you're working with multiple services, using something like Docker Compose to just spin everything up at the same time and then get nice logging and like all of this stuff is a very smooth and efficient way to work in a service-oriented architecture. So those are some really strong use cases for Docker just for local development. Have a great day.